at the Old Fields Estate at the Indianapolis Museum of Art, and joining me is Mark Zolanis, Deputy Director of Environment and Historical Preservation. Well, thank you so much for having us here today. You're very welcome. It's great to have you here. This is a magnificent property. Give me a little background here. Sure. Well, it's an unusual uh, relic of the Country Place era, which you know started back in the 1890s with the building of Biltmore mm -hmm. and finished off with about the onset of World War II. So we were smack in the middle of it back in 1912 when the Landon family, Hugh Landon and his wife, built this estate uh, here along the uh, banks of the White River. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on it was uh, purchased by uh, Josiah K. Lilly Jr., who moved here with his family in the early 1930s. And uh, it's just a wonderful 26-acre estate that uh, is here for people to enjoy. And uh, Lily, he had traveled up into New England and really enjoyed some of the landscapes you saw there and wanted to bring it back. Right, yeah. right. His wife uh, had enjoyed a garden that she uh, saw at that time and said, uh, I'd like to have one like that out here in Indianapolis. So they mm -hmm. brought out the designer, Percival Gallagher, from the Olmsted firm mm -hmm. uh, to come out here and design this garden, the Ravine Garden, in 1921. Okay, tell me a little bit about the Ravine Garden. Here. Sure, it's about one acre in size, mm -hmm. but it's very, very heavily planted in a sort of a semi-naturalistic style with mm -hmm. these curving pathways that we're walking up on right now. Very typical, um, the Olmsted style. Oh, sure, style. yeah, very yeah. much of that style, mm -hmm. but with a, uh, you might be able to hear in the background here, a stream that runs through the mm -hmm. property. Originally, just sort of a drainage ditch, but we've been able to recirculate that water through but we concentrate on some water-loving plants along these mm -hmm. edges so that the uh, cardinal flower uh, that's in bloom right now and in the springtime there's some showy lady slippers and other plants that really thrive with their feet wet mm -hmm. and take advantage of that siding. Now there's a lot of evergreen plantings as well and you mentioned uh, a lot of the well, to-do families would go up north uh, yes. Oh, yes. during they'd, the winter. They'd go to Michigan, mm -hmm. they'd go to New England, places mm -hmm. such as that. They'd see things like evergreens which are not uh, heavily planted here and they mm -hmm. would have their gardeners and their landscape architects bring them back to a spot such as this so they can enjoy them as well. So we're blessed with a wide variety of plants. There's some 19,000 plants in this one garden that we reintroduced when we restored this garden back in 1998. Excellent. Well, when Gallagher was here designing this wonderful ravine garden, uh, the family also en engaged him into doing some other renovations. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They were very smart people and mm -hmm. saw what talent he had to do this garden and mm -hmm. said, why don't you do the rest of the 26-acre property? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the other features, the Grand Allee that leads out from the front of the house, uh, replaced just a bunch of old fields of wheat that were there. He realigned the driveways to make them much more attractive and actually set the driveway down several feet into the landscape. So when you look out that Grand Allee, that that driveway disappears. It's really, disappear. it's like a, a mm -hmm. small ha-ha like you'd see in, in some of the estates in Europe where yeah. those drives disappear. That whole front uh, entry really reminds me of the grand estates in, sure. in Europe. Mm -hmm. Right, and on either side of that alley are curving pathways where you can get up close and personal with a lot of the unusual plant material, the mm -hmm. perennials and annuals and bulbs mm -hmm. that make it such a lush uh, landscape for for they as owners of the property mm -hmm. and their guests, but now our guests of the museum get mm -hmm. a chance to learn uh, from what was planted many, many years ago. It's nice to have those little intimate spaces when right. you have a lot of the properties very grand. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. It's a nice combination. Now another area that was renovated at that time was their formal garden. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it had been a formal garden from about, oh, the early days of the estate, 1912, 1913. But, uh, when Mr. Gallagher came out, he added more plant material there, added arbors, which there was not there before, put in a new sculptural element. So it was really a, a much more enriched garden than it had been before. And it turned out to be just absolutely beautiful. And about 20 years ago, we had a chance to rehabilitate that garden uh, for uh, modern day visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we changed the fabric of the pathways to make them more amenable to many okay. more visitors coming through. And what about the plant materials? Do you try to stay within a certain plant palette? As, as much as we can, being a historic estate of that country place era, we try where we can to stay with the plant material. And luckily for this ravine garden that we're standing in now, we had the exact plans from the Olmsted firm oh, to go by. Their planting list, uh, diagrams, even photographs of those plants going in. So we were able to replicate this almost exactly even finding some of the old cultivars of tulip bulbs at the Dutch uh, Bulb Museum in Holland. 
and brought those here. So we really have some real treasures out here that you wouldn't see elsewhere. Had some interesting plant hunting. I'm oh sure. sure. Oh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and now with the web being available to us, uh, mm -hmm. we could find a lot of those things which we couldn't do otherwise. One last little piece of this historic landscape that you've renovated mm -hmm. is the uh, Four Seasons Garden. The Four Seasons Garden, just this past year, we mm -hmm. finished up a complete restoration of that garden. And that was not done by the Olmsted Brothers, but later on by a woman landscape architect, Andrews Haldeman mm -hmm. of Kentucky, who the family engaged to design this very simple garden, but very lovely garden with a limited plant palette, uh, formal in some ways, but it acts as a nice backdrop for uh, I'm sure there are small parties and things, but today it's very much in demand for our social uh, weddings and other functions. Okay. Uh, people are looking to have their small reception, perhaps a, uh, uh, a wedding, uh, pre-wedding party or dinner out there as well. So it's a very, very handsome spot. Uh, again, a wonderful contribution made that possible also. Excellent. Well, this is just a remarkable landscape. You've done such great work uh, preserving it and renovating it. It's wonderful that we could preserve this little piece of history. Right. We're very fortunate we have a lot of generous people here in the Indianapolis area who are making that restoration possible and uh, couldn't happen otherwise. Thank you, Mark. You're very welcome.